Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about the development in process on the old Village Hall site. In particular, the deal that we cut with the developer to get that thing going. That property is located on Holly Street just across the street from the post office that you can see on the map right here. Everyone is quite familiar with it. If you were to drive by the building today, this is what it looked like just yesterday. You could see that it's quite a, a large building, a lot of uh, public improvements going on in the front right there. Uh, Frank Diatis is the developer. He owns Midwest Masonry here in Mundelein. He's a very successful businessman. The building is 30,000 square feet, retail on the ground floor, uh, office space on the second floor, uh, with rooftop dining capability. Uh, the building is a speculative building. No tenants were signed prior to the construction uh, beginning on this building. Now before this building started, you may recall that we had the old village hall on that same site and there it is. Uh, built in 1929, it served our village well. It served as a fire station, police station. Uh, they had a jail in the basement. The whole left third of the building that you see there was added on at one point, so it didn't really qualify for any kind of historical preservation grants or anything like that. And when we moved out of it into our new village hall facility, uh, the village had two choices. Uh, one, we could keep the building and uh, try and make use of it or sell it or lease it out, that would have required us to invest a roughly million dollars to bring it into a marketable ADA compliant office building um, through a series of ADA grandfather clauses. We were able to reside there, but those went away once we moved out. Uh, we obviously chose not to pursue that course. That's a lot of money. Um, so the other choice we had was to prepare the site for um, redevelopment and we could have uh, uh, spent roughly 350000 to demo and prepare the site, another say 355, 355000 for public improvements, widening the sidewalk and uh, adding on street parking. Uh, we elected not to do that at the time, but to rather let developers come to us, tell us what they wanted to do, and then we would talk turkey and see what deal we could cut. Well, after about four years of being vacant, uh, Frank Diatis approached us with the proposal for a seven million dollar building that you see here in the artist rendering at the time. Fantastic building. We were very excited about it, but he wanted some incentives and understandably so. And here's the list. Uh, he wanted us to uh, uh, pay him back for demoing and preparing the site like we talked about. The 355000 for the public improvements. He wanted us to do that. And then he had 300 in soft costs. Architect uh, performance bond, borings, and then a topographical survey. All that added up to just barely over a million dollars. All right, now, um, if we're gonna pay that money out, and we, we did cut this deal, and we're in the process of reimbursing him now for some of these costs, um, but critics of this deal uh, would suggest that we're just paying that million dollars out, and that's the end of the story. Um, with, and there's no discussion of how we get paid back well, we are going to get paid back uh, sooner rather than later and uh, not only get paid back that money, but a lot more as well. And I want to talk to you about how we're going to get paid back. All that money, million dollar, five thousand, qualify for a TIF reimbursement. TIF. What is TIF? Tax increment financing. That means that all property taxes above the previous levels go to the village. Now, in this case, what were the taxes previous to us doing this deal? Well, we resided in that building. It was a municipal building. There were no property taxes, zero. So we get all 100% of the new property taxes, roughly at 100,000 a year. There's eight years left on that TIF district. Uh, so we're gonna get 800,000 over the next eight years. The majority of that principal coming to us sooner than later. Here is the spreadsheet uh, that the board used before we approved of this deal. And you'll see that it includes uh, payments to the other taxing bodies. Uh, on the far right hand side, you'll see that we cut a deal with the developer to motivate him to bring in retail sales tax providing uh, tenants. And uh, we're gonna give him three quarters of that for the first 10 years and then we get all of it thereafter. And when you look at all the payments coming to the village, inclusive of the sales tax and property tax, uh, and, and we just project out 20 years, you'll see that we get not only our principal back, uh, the million dollars, but a lot more. 
And because we're getting uh, the money back so much up front, you can't just run a compound interest, uh, a compound return type calculation. You have to do what's called an internal rate of return. And when you run that through a calculator, it comes out to roughly 6%, 5.926% when you look at those estimated payments. That's not too bad. But that's not the full story because other taxing bodies are going to benefit starting in year nine of that 20 year projection. And look at this, over the next 20 years, D75, District 75 gets over 600,000. D120 gets over 300,000, et cetera. Total to return to the taxpayers is over 2 million six. And when you do a compound annual return on that for 20 years, that's 4.92, roughly 5%. So you know what, 5%, 6%, for an investment that's backed by the taxing power of the municipality, that's not too bad. That's pretty darn good. And you know what? Vernon Hills just cut a deal for a $20 million deal at Melody Farms over on 60 in Milwaukee, where they're reimbursing the developer and then getting the TIF money back over the next several years. So this kind of a deal structure uh, is, is not uncommon. It was just done you know, from one of our neighbors here. So this is a win-win for everyone. The developer is motivated to provide a fantastic building. And by the way, we have to talk about the intangible benefits of that building. It's gonna have huge ripple effects on other development in downtown. We are being approached by other developers right now as we speak for other projects surrounding this one. So we're very excited to bring you news about that over the upcoming months. Let's wrap this up with the quote of the day. Martin Luther King, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. Amen to that. We need more of that message of unity and brotherhood and et cetera. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.